So I've been working and campaigning quite a lot on environmental issues, specifically marine litter, living on the coast all my life, it, it's something that's close to home. And using virtual reality and campaigning, it was a way of targeting younger people um, because they're the ones that will make the change. Victoria Russell had a normal and happy family life until her mother became seriously ill and passed away when Victoria was just 17. So the first 17 years of my life, quite used to just your regular family, mum, dad, brother, and then her getting sick, it changed the whole dynamic. So uh, I took on a lot more household responsibilities, as did my dad. My brother was away at university at the time, so uh, it, it was just a very strange, strange time. You can say it's very surreal. She passed away just before Christmas, just as I was getting ready for my general health and exams. And sort of as an escape, I suppose, I started studying far more than I've ever studied before. For me, it was an escape. The bereavement, we're all going to face it at some stage in our lives. It's um, no one knows how you're going to react because it comes with lots and lots of um, social and psychological factors uh, that are inherent within the individual facing that. So a young person losing a parent would, would very much have to deal with the fact that they are going through a transition in their life. They've now got another trans transition. Is one of their role models, one of their peers, one of the people that they would hope to see and support them and be with them on that journey into adult, adulthood is no longer there. So I was quite fortunate to get all my A-levels on my first attempt. Um, I got into University of York. It got to uh, just around November time the following year after my mum's death and I just wasn't, wasn't enjoying it. it. I think it might have just been a combination of everything being away from home after home had changed so much. Caring for her mother during her illness affected the whole family and would eventually take its toll on her father's own health. My dad was diagnosed with pneumonia for the first time and with my dad being so ill at that time it was a great opportunity for me to just say no I've had enough I'm going home. He allowed me to defer the entire year on the provision that I went back to York University the following year which I did for two days. I went, I moved into my flat, I enrolled. The next day I was in the car on the way home, having packed up all my stuff. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it, I just don't know what it was, whether it was the association to my mum's passing, my dad's sickness and my own problems. Um, I just couldn't stay at York. My dad in a lot better health at the time. Had all my, unbeknownst to me, can I add, um, had all my A-levels and GCSEs in the car. He'd rung up Hull University and said that um, there was a student who would like to enrol. <laughs> what can we do? And so on the car ride home from York University, I was like, why are we going into Hull? And he was like, you're not dropping out of university again. Not for me, <laughs> not for anything. You need this. Um, he was right, I had no plan. Moving to Hull University allowed Victoria to be closer to her family and friends. She was able to reconnect with the basketball community that had been an important part of her family's life throughout her teenage years. Basketball was huge. Um, I started when I was 12 um, at secondary school that my dad, consequently at the time, was a teacher at. Um, he set up a basketball club at the school I joined. I got my friends to come down. And all the way up, including on the day my mum died, we actually played a basketball game in Hull that night. Um, so that was huge. And it was also our first ever win mm -hmm. as a team was that night. And the team didn't win. <laughs> Not until the Mini Bush ride on the way home. So yeah, it was a huge day in good ways and bad ways, I suppose. So Snap Prats Basketball Club's community-based um, non-profit group. Um, we rely solely on funding bids to get through, make up our losses. Um, so a lot of the people we work with can't afford necessarily to pay for their sessions 
and so my father who's the coach and owner of the clubs got in contact with Benel and said help essentially um, and through that we met Jenny. Connecting with Benel and meeting Jenny would prove to be an important turning point in Victoria's life. They helped us with our policy procedures, uh, they also sponsored our club and yeah that's how we met Jenny, I was asked to come in and help on some events that they had where they just needed bodies to run around. Victoria began volunteering on Benel's Infused project, working with the team that supported young people. As a full-time member of the New Ignite team, Victoria supported other young people on their own projects. The idea of Ignite, young people come to us with their own projects and we learn to do them projects ourselves whilst helping them through things that they might not have thought of, so risk assessments, licensing, sort of more the boring side of it, but the stuff that you need, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you're not going anywhere. So some of our bigger projects have included music gigs, uh, we've done basketball tournaments, football tournaments, balloon releases. Eventually she found funding to address the concerns she had on environmental issues and the Pipes Away project was born. We, we found out about the funding bid because uh, our boss Jenny, um, she invited the funders down to sort of put on a workshop to introduce the whole concept and we learnt about what it is they were looking for, what it is they wanted. I went up to, to Grimsby to Vanel to um, run a workshop on what the environment now was and that's when Victoria sort of approached me and said that she was thinking about doing um, Pipes Away project. Uh, we had particular support from Heather and Lydia uh, both fantastic people based in Leicester working through the uh, National Youth Agency. Victoria came down to do a pre-pitch workshop where we went through all of the basics of pitching. Um, we also supported Victoria through her application and through the actual pitch itself. Pipes Away is a virtual reality game that offers fun and an engaging way to raise awareness of environmental issues. So to start with, we start off in a white room and essentially this is the demo stage. So this is where I'll be telling people to get used to it, to look around. And then we actually enter into the sewer system. So now we're in, uh, you can have a look around. We're on a boat uh, flowing down the sewer. Um, again, we've got a selection of items in front of us. We've got a jet washer, we've got some bleach, we've got a boiling kettle and some caustic soda. These are items commonly used by households to clear blockages that have been caused. So we just pick up one, pop it on and fire at the blockages. Uh, we've got some fat soils and grease. A common misconception is that using a kettle to clear it will work. It doesn't, it just shifts the blockage on a little bit. And um, some other items that we have down here um, include rubber ducks. We've got a set of false teeth that may or may not appear. These have all been recorded as being flushed down the sinks and toilets. We've also got Lego bricks, which is a very common thing for young children to be flushing down their toilets, especially when parents aren't looking. So with these four items, um, they rank as either super effective, effective, not effective or useless. If, if something's useless, the item that you're using to try and clear the blockage won't work. So you've got to change quite quickly turn around and get the blockage. Again, we've got some nappies, we've got hair again, we've got some condoms down there. And once you've done, you'll get the choice of, well, you'll see how well you're doing, dependent on how clean the water is. So if the water's a nice blue, you've cleared the blockages successfully. If, however, you've not done so well, it will be a bit of a disaster. And that's that. So I've been working and campaigning quite a lot on environmental issues, specifically marine litter, living on the coast all my life. It, it's something that's close to home. And using virtual reality and campaigning, it was a way of targeting younger people um, because they're the ones that will make the change. Water companies and environmental agencies have started to show an interest in the game and Victoria is hoping to develop it commercially.
With great determination and help from family, friends and supporting agencies, Victoria has managed to overcome the difficulties in her life and find success in the area that are closest to her heart. Matthew beside you. If you have been affected by any of the issues raised in this programme, you can get help from your GP or you can contact the Samaritans on 116 123. If you have an idea for a project that can help your local community, Call the Ignite team at Voluntary Action North East Lincolnshire on 01472 231 123.